From the News Channel 8 studios, let's talk live with your hosts, Natasha Barrett and Doug McKelway. But first, this is interesting. We're going to talk to a guy who survived freezing cold temperatures, no food, no shelter, and really relative isolation. I mean, would you do this? You know, I'd be really intrigued. It'd have to be a really good I'd, prize. I'd read up. I think I would like to do it, but uh, but I don't know if I'm as tough as this guy. Jake Nodar <laughs> is his name. He's a Baltimore native. He said yes to this offer to go up to Alaska and basically try to survive. He and several other people faced that blistering cold, bone-chilling winds, even possible starvation, all to be a part of the Discovery Channel show called Out of the Wild, the Alaska Experiment. He is uh, thawed out now, and he's here <laughs> with us. Uh, it should be uh, an easier time on the show than you had up in Alaska. Jake, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. This is really fascinating to me. They basically just plopped you down there in, in a pretty desolate wilderness and said, Go okay, for it. Good Go luck. It. Yeah, we had some basic survival <laughs> tools and sent us on our way. What were your basic surviving tools? We had flint and steel to start a fire. We had a gun, a map, and a compass, and that was pretty that much was it. it. Close wow. now, now, you have had some experience with, with animals, I at the very least. So you I train horses. You yeah. train horses, yeah. and, and you, you kept a lot of bizarre animals as pets and stuff like that growing up. That's right? correct. Yeah, no grizzly bears, so I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. You can't get that in a backyard in Darntown, Maryland, no, can you? you cannot. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, tell, tell me how it happened. What uh, you, they, t you, they took you for the offer. You went up there. They plop you down there. You're on your own. Tell me how it went. Uh, talk me through the, the uh, time frame here. Well, it was myself and eight others, and we had a GPS locator on us, so if we couldn't go on, we'd hit it, and we'd be choppered out. Uh, several people did not make it. Oh, and, that was uh, like your last resort. It the was. GPS thing. It okay, was. Okay. And there's no prize at the end. We all did it for the personal challenge. What? I know, no million dollars. Um, right. There is no wow. tribal council, although I would have liked to vote it a couple people so off. This, this, was, this was a real reality show. Th th that it was. You yes, said you'd was. like to vote a couple people off. Who, uh, who would that be? Well, I, I don't want to give. looking at video of some people here. Oh, uh, not you Carolyn. She was our chef. She was amazing. <laughs> she kept uh, you well, fed. Oh, there's Trish. Maybe her. Ooh. <laughs> Did Trish make it to the end? Uh, you're going to have to pick up the DVD to find Whatever, that out. Man. <laughs> Can't give us so, a hint. But really, so how did, how did it evolve? I mean, the, initially, everybody's feeling pretty w good because you're well fed. You, you come from reasonable civilization, but then things deteriorate, right? Very quickly. The first couple days, I think we were all in a bit of a daze. I had seen all these wildlife shows of salmon jumping out of the river into bears' mouths, and I thought, this is going to be so easy, you know, just <laughs> hang out by the river with a basket and collect some fish. But um, none of us were prepared for, uh -huh. for what was out there. And uh, yeah, we'd go three, four days without any food. Wow. Uh, one day, eight of us shared a mouse. I mean, it was. Oh my God! It was did really you cook, tough. Did you cook the mouse? We did. Um, I actually provided that for the group, so I got choice. I got um, a hind piece, which was amazing, a little bit like chicken. And, <laughs> Everything um, tastes a little bit like chicken, but somehow <laughs> right. you can't convince me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe if I'm not hungry. What, right, what happens yeah. after four days of not eating? Um, you just feel drained. I mean, that stomach pain that you get when you miss a meal quickly goes away, and you just you lose all energy. I and mean, it was it was a, a pretty tough feeling. And so, how did you get through that? Yeah. Uh, we, we got much more serious about it. We spent more time fishing and hunting. We'd be out scavenging for berries, whatever we could find. And um, we did enough to get by. I mean, we all dropped a lot of weight, so clearly we weren't that good. How much weight did you lose? I lost 26 pounds. 26 yeah, it was pounds. amazing. Wow. I got home, I put my skinny jeans on, and they were like MC Hammer pants. It was <laughs> your skinny jeans. Yeah, it I was amazing. It. But um, no, it was uh, one of the guys dropped 45 pounds in 13 days. Mm -hmm. It was. Jake, uh, was there ever a moment where you thought, you know, forget this, I, I can't do it, I, I, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm just too weak? I, I never thought about quitting. I think I, I was very set on even crawling into civilization if I had to. It was tough because we didn't know how it was going to end. We didn't know how far we had to go. Um, and we had to sign up for being up there up to eight weeks. So uh, it played with your head quite a bit. Uh, describe for me whether or not your preconceptions about the people on this endeavor, uh, whether the stereotypes you had about them fit into um, how it ultimately turned out. Now, were the tough guys tough guys? Were the, were the you know, so-called, quote-unquote, weaker women really weaker? How did that evolve? It, it was a surprise to everybody. It was not just physical. It was so, so much a mental aspect to it. Um, very quickly, within the first couple of days, one of the best hunters uh, had to check out. She just couldn't, couldn't really, go on. Done. And we were all shocked. And uh, several more people left within the next couple of days. And it's not at all who you'd expect mm -hmm. to leave. 
There's, a, there's another interesting component to it, and I, I don't know if it was germane to the story or the experience at all, but I read about it in your biography. You're openly gay. That's correct. Did that factor into the dynamic in any way, shape, or form? For me personally, growing up, it was a very religious setting, and my only connection to the gay community was a CD, a comedy CD by Ellen and her TV show. And for me personally, if I can be on TV and represent and just, just go out there and be a role model, I mean, that gave me so much uh -huh. willpower just you to really get You really said this. you had to worry about that because on your bio with the show, you talked about maybe this being um, a problem with other people that you meet on the show because they might carry some preconceived notions. You have people coming from all over the country. Did anybody treat you differently because of who you were? Not at all. I think we had um, such greater issues going on that we had to come together and work together and where you came from or who you were had nothing to do with it. I mean, we all clicked and it was, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. So how would you rate yourself? Out of all these people. Out of 10, I'd probably say about 11. That was amazing. No <laughs> kidding. Yeah. I, was, I surprised myself. I mean, I, I didn't realize that my body could be pushed that hard. To those and, um, limits. Yeah. So when you came back, what was the first thing you wanted to eat? Uh, oh man, I put on 29 pounds in nine days. I ate Are you serious? I, I was eating like crazy. I what think was I the went, first thing? Um, at the wrap party, I had steak, crab legs, shrimp, <laughs> margaritas, wine. Did you do margaritas? You, you were drunk off the smell right. of a margarita, <laughs> Pretty right? Much, yeah. But when you ate that, I mean, did you get sick immediately after? Because you the hear doctor, these people not eating these things, and all of a sudden you eat this food and you're blah. The doctor told us be very careful. You might want to stick with something like oatmeal, which we were like, yeah, right. Heck no. You know, it, it was painful. I, I got very, very yeah. sick. You know, before we go, I'm, I'm really curious what you take away from this experience. I often think about what would happen in a worst case scenario in a civilized country like the United States mm -hmm. if, if we lost, if there was some, you know, electromagnetic pulse, uh, nuclear war, and we lost all of our yeah. electronics. How, and it you, became, how would you survive? It became basic survival skills. Um, what, what, what do you think would happen in a situation like that, having faced real survival? It's, it's tough, but I mean, as, as we saw, ordinary people were capable of doing it. You know, I think coming together, we, we worked as an amazing group, and I think uh, it's something people can do, but it takes a little practice. Wow. Okay. I, hats off to you, man, because yeah, I've missed really. breakfast and I'm starving. <laughs> so I, I don't know how you do it. She's going to pass out. Right here, right now. Shane, thanks for coming on. Good sure, to meet you, Sure, thanks for having me.